Welcome again friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video tutorial, we'll be talking the difference between salting in and salting out. Okay. So you probably heard this name earlier because I also have a video on salting out in different videos. So you can see that video if you want to study. But uh, in this video, I'm going to focus on uh, the difference between salting in and salting out. Okay. So let's talk about it. Both of these terminologies, they are used uh, in case of the determination of precipitation of proteins, okay? That means uh, if I draw a simple scenario, it will make you to understand. Uh, let's say the solution, solution filled with proteins, say different types of, let's say this blue proteins here out there, okay? So mixture of proteins, let's say, same type of proteins are concentrated solution of proteins. Now, in some cases, we need to have those proteins in our hand okay though it's a mixed with solutions and all the other contents we need certain proteins to take out from the mixture let's say here we have another protein that is this red one we want these blue proteins uh, in our hand for further research and study so what we can do we need to pick them up manually so how could you do that or even if it's a single protein mixture but still we need some concentrated form of the protein so it sometimes needs to settle those proteins down to the bottom of the chamber okay, or tank, whatever we are using. So how we will settle down that protein content? We can do that by increasing the salt concentration or salt concentration plays a very important role in the precipitation of proteins. Okay. Now that salt concentration when at very low or let's say it's very low to low salt concentration conditions at that time what we can do when we have small salts to that mixture same mixture that small amount of salt will help those proteins to be stabilized in their structure okay but when we slowly increase the concentration of salt high to very high at that condition it starts create problem that means at very high concentration of salt protein molecules tend to fuse with each other and separate out from the rest of the solution from rest of the aqueous solution that is it's a main material is water obviously because it, we are talking about in the aqueous solution okay so at very low concentration it facilitates the solu solubility on the other hand, if we increase the concentration, it causes the protein to be precipitated down to the bottom. Okay. This phenomena is known as salting in and salting out. Salting in means whenever we apply small amount of salt concentration, that helps proteins to stabilize their structure. So proteins remain more soluble in the water or aqueous solutions. That thing is known as salting in. So this first scenario, it is known as salting in, it, it is facilitating the solubility. On the other hand, if we increase the temperature, increase the concentration of salt, further it will destabilize the structure of the protein and the proteins will precipitate down. That is known as salting out. So that is the two different scenarios, salting in and salting out that we want to talk. Now you know for understanding the mechanism why salting in and salting out take place, you need to know another thing that is the solvent-solute interaction and how this interaction is played by a protein and water or aqueous solution and how salt is going to interfere with this interaction. So normally in a mixture, let's draw a big mixture here big chamber in this chamber let's say this is the protein this protein is interacting let's say let's draw two or three more proteins okay now these proteins are interacting with the water molecule so let's say this is the water molecule they are in contact with water molecules okay just for simplicity i'm drawing two or three things so what happens in protein proteins are made with amino acids right so if you look at the structure of proteins, when it, they are made with amino acids, normally when we put proteins in the aqueous solution, where water is surrounding the protein in that condition, 
hydrophilic amino acids tend to pre present in the out or surrounding sites while the hydrophobic amino acids present the inside of the protein okay so if we look at the protein structure here like this all these mo moieties or amino acids that we see surrounding on the surface area are hydrophilic that means they can interact with water without any problem and all the type of hydrophobic phobic amino acids tends to fold inside hydrophobic inside of the protein okay and they form hydrophobic core that is the internal core filled with hydrophobic hydrophobic molecules cannot interact with water or aqueous solution that's why they tend to present inside so if this is the condition so hydrophilic regions are involving the interaction with water okay by a solute solvent interaction and the solute solvent interaction is normally depending on the physical chemical properties of proteins the ph of the solution the temperature they are in these are the things they rely on it vary it may vary for different proteins as the protein structure varies as the protein's amino acid content vary they can vary but ultimately they have an interaction with the water molecule or the surrounding molecules okay now once we start adding once we start adding the salt in it let's say red dots are salt now this salt once in very slow concentration the salts first start to interact with the protein molecules because proteins outside are charged amino acids so they can interact with salts so salt tends to interact with the proteins molecule at the very beginning at very low concentration of salt this is at very low concentration to low concentration of salt now now as a result what will happen proteins have those you know amino acids positively charged amino acids surrounding hydrophilic amino acids which are interacting with the salts so this salts can help the proteins to stabilize their structure more because inner side they have the hydrophobic if the outer side they get more of this this salts or ions it will stabilize the structure we know that you know the dna backbone structure is stabilized by the presence of magnesium we know that right these things are very important the ionic interactions now in this case they will help the stabilization so it slightly increase the solubility of this proteins because this small amount of salt concentration is not interfering the interaction between the protein and water it's not doing any interaction so as a result it helps in the better solubilization we call it as a salting in helps the proteins to solubilize in the in the aqueous solution now if we start rising the concentration of the salt the same salt if we rise the concentration okay now it's it's becoming very high or high at that condition it will be filled with this salt so now what will happen this salt component start interacting with water right they start interacting with water so as salt start interacting with water molecules the interaction between the amino acid and water slowly start to become very weak this interaction is going to be very weak so as a result now water tends to interact with more salts rather than interacting with the proteins so water is interacting with the salts and proteins are being now alone because the salt molecule moieties are also going from the protein surface so proteins are alone now so what proteins decide at that condition all those proteins to make the structure even more stabilized conditions the surface area they are charged amino acids so those proteins tend to come closer to interact with themselves because there is no other one to interact with salt is gone to interact with water so now proteins will come closer so what happens here protein molecules will come close to each other and start forming interactions hydrophilic interactions in the surrounding and water molecule along with the salt start to create uh, this is the salt molecules for example they start to create a kind of shell it's called hyd hydrophilic shell or, or water cell that start to form surrounding those proteins but they're not interacting directly with the proteins so what happens as a result as proteins come to close to each other they start to bind with each other they start to interact with each other it will turn those proteins in a huge mass and the protein gets precipitated down because solubility gets less and the proteins get 
separated from the rest of the solution so it gets precipitated to the bottom so once it gets precipitated to the bottom we get the layer of precipitates we take out the supernatant and throw it away and we take the pellet that is filled with proteins and we can take our proteins in hands we can deal with them so this is the idea of salting out this is salting out two things salting in we talked about salting out we talked about now if i show you a diagram if i show you a graph it will help you to further understand the whole process in much more detail let's say here in this graph if we begin with uh, let's let's change it a little bit let's erase this ones okay let's say this is the x axis and y axis in the y axis we add solubility solubility of the proteins on the x axis what we put we put the salt concentration okay so salt concentration increasing salt concentration in the y axis increasing solubility in this in this direction okay so in this case what you will see you will see something like that when we start adding salt it will increase the solubility and up to a single point once that point is reached then the solubility of salts dramatically drops down okay so this is how the graph will look like now in this case at the very beginning well the very little salt concentration this is the scenario of salting in when as i discussed earlier those small concentration of salts help the structure of proteins to be stabilized this is the scenario okay when uh, if i draw the protein structure it will look something like this this will be the proteins proteins and salts are interacting start interacting with the proteins something like this okay now the second scenario here at this top region where here we see the start, the end point of the salting in where salt concentration is beginning to rise now at that condition what we will get we will get the scenario like let's say this is the protein and the salts start to interact with the proteins like that so the high concentration of salt as we see in this condition at the very end at this point of time if you take a snap what we will find that the salts are separated and the proteins are attached with each other so here what we will find the image like something like this this is a protein and salts start to form that that shell surrounding that protein and proteins tend to interact with themselves as well inside something like that which is salting out right so this in a sense is the difference between salting in and salting out so do not forget about this idea so so i hope this video helps you and if you like this video definitely hit the subscribe button to get more videos like that hit the like button and share this video with your friends in all social media platforms thank you